Hi everyone, my name is Lindsay. I blog and do videos at Crafting While Caffeinated on my blog and YouTube. But today I want to share with you my marker marbling tutorial. So for today's tutorial, you're going to need a few supplies. And the first thing I want to start off with is I'm working on a work surface. You do not need to do this, but I have a hard board and also a piece of paper to catch any extra marker that's going to run over the sides. Now I'll be working on a two sized regular cardstock panels, not watercolor paper, regular cardstock panels. I have cream and white. You want a light colored cardstock. I also have a piece of acetate. This is from a stamp set that I have, and this is you want a large enough piece that it's going to cover your entire piece of cardstock. So whatever size cardstock you decide to go with, just make sure that your acetate is going to fully cover that. And you might want to have a little wiggle room on the outside too. I'm also going to be using watercolor markers. These have brush tips on them. That's what I suggest using. But you can use any watercolor marker that you have on hand with a brush tip. What I want to do is I actually want to take four different markers. I like to use at least four. You can use more by all means, but I like to do four in this tutorial. And I have four shades of brown that I'll be using here. I have a dark, a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter, and then my very lightest color. I'm starting off with my darkest color and I'm going to start drawing on my acetate. I am making little V's here. You can start with one line, have them merge, have them intersect, whatever you want to draw here. Just make sure you get a little color on your acetate. You don't want a whole lot of this darker color. You want to use it a little bit more sparingly. And as we go along, we will add more of this in at the very end. So don't worry about covering any of this up. I also drew a little kind of oblong oval off to the left hand side there and then I'm going to move on to my next color. Now I'm going from darkest to lightest here so I'm going to pick up my second darkest shade here and I am going to color right up against those lines that I drew. So you can go on the outside, you can go on the inside, you can go on both the outside and the inside. Again, you just want to get the color on the acetate and you want to make sure that you're drawing a little bit over those lines, blending the colors together. You don't have to worry about getting any ink on your marker tip. These are watercolor markers. The extra ink will scribble right off. You don't have to worry about contamination. So I drew in a few little lines, then I'm going to go into my next darkest color. This one, I'm going to go a little bit more heavy handed with it. So I'll go on the inside of my little oval and then on the outside as well. I'm making my lines a little bit wider here. So I'm going a little bit more sparingly with my darker colors. As I go towards my lighter colors, I'm going to add more and more color in. You don't want to start off heavy handed with the dark colors just because it can overtake your whole project. So start off light. You can always go back in and add more later. I'm going to continue on just adding little bits of this color and I'm going again right up against the lines I've already drawn making sure that those two colors blend together. You can also see the color is pooling up a little bit. That's okay. It's going to do that no matter what you do. We will go back and fix that. You also can take your time. If this dries on you, if you need to leave it for a minute, if you just want to step back and take a look at it, that's okay because we'll go back in and wet this later on. So don't worry about the ink drying on you either. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and take my lightest marker and fill in all of that extra space that doesn't have any color, color on it yet. And again, I want to make sure that this is blending with the color I just drew on. I'll go in between all those little spaces and make sure to really get that color in there. Now once I have went through all of my different colors here, gotten the color on exactly how I want it the first layer, I'm going to come back in with some of my darker shades because I have lost a little bit of those darkest colors in there. So I've got my darkest shade and I'll come in with the very, very tip of this and using a very, very light hand. Um, you can see I'm getting a little bit of those lines skipping. That's what I want at this point. I don't want to come back in with really harsh lines. This is kind of the fine detail point. So I'll come in and just add a few more of those lines, go back over the previous lines I've drawn. And again, I'm using the very tip of that marker. I'm not pressing very firmly and I'm adding in some of those fine details. 
I'll also come back in with my medium shade and add a few more of those. This is just going to add more and more detail to the finished project. So come back in, add as much as you want. You can go and do as many different lines, as many different intersections as you want. You just wanna get it to where a point of where you're happy. If you have trouble with the way you have it looking in your head, pull up a picture of marbling on your phone and just go from there, kind of follow that pattern. I just did that beforehand and then I just kind of went with different V's as you can see here. So I'm adding in those last little fine details with my medium marker and then it's time to give this a spray. So I'm using regular water in a spray bottle and for this spray I want to go up a little bit higher and a very fine mist. You don't want to overpower this with water. You just kind of want to reactivate those markers, get them wet again so they'll transfer onto your cardstock. Go ahead and pick up your acetate, put your cardstock, again regular cardstock, not watercolor paper. You want this to soak in very quickly and then go ahead and flip your acetate right on top of that and just sit it on top of the cardstock. I'm pressing a little bit here. You don't want to give it too much pressure or else it can start to move around the colors and you want to let this sit for a while. You want to allow those colors to soak into the fibers of the paper and just absorb. Once you're happy and you know that the color is transferred, go ahead and pick up your acetate off that first piece of cardstock. You can see that the cardstock is curling because it's normal cardstock, you've got water on there. Once it's dry, put it under a book or something heavy and it'll flatten right back out. Now, I've got all this leftover ink on top of my acetate, so I'm actually gonna come in, spray this again, very liberally this time. You can see it's got quite a bit of water. Flip it over onto another piece of cardstock and lay it on top of there. Now here's where you can come in with your fingers and move those lines around. This is more of a muted marble look. The other one, you have all those lines that you drew. This one, you wanna give a good two or three minutes for it to sit on top of the paper and really absorb in. Then you can come in, peel that acetate off, and you've got this gorgeous marbled background. This almost looks, it's more muted, like I said. A different look, but you get this, you get two projects for the price of one. So you're not doing all that work just for one project. Now you could probably get a third one out of that if you wanted to, I stop it too. But I'm gonna show you this technique again, this time with a different color combination. I've got pinks here. I'm doing the same exact technique here. Started with my darkest, I'm gonna to work to my lightest color, and then I'll come back in with my two darkest shades. You do not have to stick with one color combination here or one shade of color, I guess I should say. You can switch this up and do pinks and blues. I've also done this with Christmas colors and that turned out really pretty. Just make sure that whenever you're doing this, you have colors that are gonna complement each other and not turn muddy on you if you mix, if they decide to mix on your project. I met my lightest shade. I went in and filled in all that extra space and now I'm coming back in with my darkest shades and adding in those fine details. At this point, again, make sure you use that light hand and the very tip of the marker. Then come in and blend that out just a little bit. Make sure your markers are overlapping. For this project, I actually add in perfect pearls to my water and sprayed that onto my acetate. This gave it a little bit of shimmer and shine, so you can customize this technique as much as you want to. I'm also putting this on top of white cardstock this time. I'll go ahead and lay that right on top, give it a few seconds to soak in there, make sure that it's transferring onto the paper and soaking into the fibers. Now again, you can see in the top right hand corner, I've got a little bit of white space where I just missed coloring. I can just take my acetate and just kind of push it onto the cardstock to kind of give it a little bit of color in that corner and it looks like nothing happened. Again, I sprayed very liberally this time flip my cardstock over, and start moving that color around with my fingers to give it the more muted, almost watercolor look. Now this one had a quite a bit of water, so I made sure to press all that extra water into my surrounding paper so it didn't pull up on the edges. Again, these are gonna curl. Just stick them under a heavy book, and then you can finish off the cards however you want to. I just stuck a sentiment right in the middle and really let these backgrounds stand out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video tutorial and I can't wait to see all the projects you make.
Thanks for watching and happy crafting.